Jesus's life of controversy, his birth, the life of Jesus, his death, his burial, his resurrection. He said he's coming back. Welcome back. When it comes to your faith in Jesus Christ or explaining your faith to other people, which there will come a time when people are going to come and ask you, what's the reason for the hope that you have? Why do you believe in God? What evidence do you have? Well, Christian, you actually do have evidence. And I came to the conclusion that all the evidence is actually for believers. Um, God says when you come to him, when you step to him, you have to know and you have to believe that he is the great I am. So, we have reason to believe in God. We actually, our faith rests on evidence, you know. So, we could talk experience in your relationship with God, answered prayers. Um, he's not just a little idol that has ears but can't hear, that has lips but can't speak. Um, he is the real thing. He's the creator of the universe. That brings me to my next point. Creation. Okay? Let's start there. And you artists out there, you should know that any piece of art requires an artist. For example, Mount Rushmore, you would see the faces and you wouldn't say oh, that's a natural occurrence. No man made it. You can totally tell. We're smart beings. We can tell what's natural and what is man-made. And so just looking at creation, anybody who sees it and is not blinded by the prince of this world can tell that something divine, something out of this world created this world. Someone who's not part of our physical earth um, the other option <laughs> the alternative would be a moment of a big bang creating order out of chaos which totally goes against what is observable in science um, I don't know if you're familiar with the law the second law of thermodynamics it doesn't get better like it doesn't evolve into something better it never has like you drop an ice cream on a straight and it melts and you know it's not you can't eat it anymore it's just it's common sense and everything in nature shows that exact same thing so if we've been here for like millions and millions of years where is the stuff? Where is the evidence? Where are like the bones? Like they're finding one bone here and one bone there, but it doesn't show that we've all like ever been anything other than a human being. Um, the missing link is still missing and they'll never find that part. <laughs> I can assure you that. And, um, you know, planting like farming hasn't even been around for that long. So, all of this goes to show you that they have really nothing to go on and the creation story that's in the Bible is the best like the best way we can explain where we came from and uh, compared to other creation stories that is the creation story we get from the Bible is actually the best um, possible solution to where we came from and even with Darwin's finches um, those were still birds, like they were still finches. They didn't magically, and it is magic if you think about it, become something else like a kangaroo or an owl. No, they stayed birds. Like I want to see one thing turning into another thing observably for evolution to be even considered something real and not, you know, being taught in schools and universities as fact. 
Meanwhile, it's still a theory of evolution. It really is called a theory. So don't worry about that. Um, also, living in a dynamic information age, uh, largely driven by science, by the scientific community, and it's a digital revolution as well. Like, knowledge is everywhere. Like, it's exploded. Like, remember the prophet Daniel saying knowledge would increase? Like, mad rising? Like, mad information? It couldn't be any truer today. And with so much information, with so much going on, we still don't have any understanding. Isn't that weird to you? Like, the basic common knowledge that you get from the Word of God, like, it's missing today the more it's being pushed away, you know, like the news and stuff, like they keep feeding you information and information like to be informed, but it's horrible. The fundamental lack of basic understanding and common sense, you know, God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Yeah. But knowledge and understanding, or is it meaningless information that we're getting, that we're being fed? You know, thinking about those deep questions, like, it makes sense to just go back to the Word of God and read the whole book and not just take one sentence out and try and uh, refute it when you don't even understand the whole picture. Like, if you're reading any kind of book, you got to read the whole thing and then you ask the questions. And then let's see if the question that you came in, like, that you came in with um, isn't answered or doesn't seem silly so another thing that you can talk about when it comes to your faith is the resurrection story that's like the one solid thing that we have is that the resurrection of Jesus Christ actually happened and I truly believe with all of my heart that he did things that only God can do and he was a historical figure he actually walked the earth I can promise you that. You can ask the histor historians. They will not deny that. Only people nowadays, you know, not knowing the difference between a myth, a Greek myth, and these Greek gods and stuff, which those are myths, but Jesus Christ wasn't even a legend. Like, a legend, you know, dies off in like two generations or so. Um, they figure it out. But Jesus actually walked the earth. And secular people... In history can actually um, account to that it's not just the 500 eyewitnesses that saw him after he resurrected like that's how cops would even investigate a situation today like who you know you go by what eyewitnesses saw and if what they say syncs up and it's not like if you saw something happen and four other people did like let's go to the four Gospels you guys wouldn't say everything word for word, right? That would make a cop suspicious if, like, every single word was the same thing. But you can tell, and that's what I love about the Bible, that different people said the same thing. Like, the main events, um, they link up, they sync up. And without the Word of God, how would we know a standard for morality? How would we know about life after death? Jesus talked about that all the time. And what he claimed to be, the things that he did, he was one with God. Like, God actually visited the earth in a human vessel, which is Jesus Christ. And his name has so much power. It, even today, like, I read an article, um, a woman, like, bound to the wheelchair, like, palsy or... I forgot what it was that she had, but she was completely healed because of her faith in Jesus Christ. And those things are happening all over the world, all over the world. Jesus' name cures. It helps people just like he did back then. He would touch a leper and people were like, what is he doing? And he was healing them, you know? And um, going back to the resurrection story, uh, I don't know if you know about Roman soldiers, but their units are like 16-man units, and they're pretty buff. 
And if they were put in front of the grave to watch it because of the religious people, they were kind of like suspicious of, you know, the disciples and stuff. Even though the disciples ran away, they scattered, they were afraid because of um, uh, Jesus being arrested. And it was so shameful, like the way he died, you know, for us. And so they didn't think that he was going to rise again. They had not a reason to believe that, you know other than the stuff that he told them and whatever he would say it would happen so when he says i'm coming back better believe he's coming back we don't know when but you better be ready now and that's the thing like god gave us a way to be reconciled to him as the creator and it has always been about faith with god he always wanted our trust our faith like we have trust in so many different things you know and we don't question it but we don't have faith in god when his word is alive and jesus is alive and he's still working today like he worked back then for those who believe in him so when somebody comes and asks you about your faith and why you think god exists you can tell them all these things like creation that just shows you right there that somebody created it and that somebody wrote about it and that somebody kept telling the generations over and over to turn back to him and that he's the one who created the heavens and the earth and God's thoughts are not like our thoughts he says that too you know so if there's something you don't understand go read his word read his word you can tell people about the manuscripts that, that have been found of the scriptures that go mile high you know Socrates and all of them other philosophers it might be like a stack like this high um, that they found about them and it was written like hundreds and hundreds of years later after they had died and the scriptures you can find like up to the roof so like what do you believe like which one would you rather believe you know God is so different. Our God is so different from any other gods. He hears you. He answers. He speaks to his people. He changes hearts. Who do you know that can do that? Change a heart. Everything you do flows from your heart. So, even the way that he wants to be worshipped in spirit and in truth, he is spirit. So I'm not going to like bring you like a physical evidence of him when he's not even physical. He's the spirit of truth. And if you ask him to show you the truth, he will teach you. He will show you through his Holy Spirit. That's his spirit. The only like one and only spirit of truth is the Holy Spirit. So ask for understanding. Like I know I understand there's many, many different religions out there right and if you want go ahead and try them out try out these gods that don't hear you that don't care for you that didn't shed their blood for you but we're all sinners we've all sinned against God and we know this deep down our conscience tells us so because God's laws are written on your heart so no one has an excuse my friend and when you stand before God like what are you gonna tell him there was too many gods on this planet. <laughs> when he's shown you all along who he was, who he is, you just didn't want to take the time. Or you were too arrogant. You thought you knew everything. You thought <laughs> science knew everything. Meanwhile, they don't. Like when it comes to important things of life, they, they don't have the answers. God does. And when you look at God, look at Jesus Christ. He was God in the flesh, 100%. See what he claimed of himself. See what he does. See who he is. Like, in, like, at the end of the day, you have to answer, all of us have to answer individually who Jesus was. And if you're looking for truth, if you're seeking truth, you will come across Jesus at some point. And then you have to decide. Nobody can do that for you. And so there's no point in arguing with people and debating and trying to force them to believe in God. God doesn't want that. 
He don't want that. He doesn't want a bunch of people forced into his kingdom. He wants people coming willingly. People who like love who he is and want to know him. A relationship, not a religion. Religion is like do, do, do this, 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 and that. That's not what God wants and that's not what he invented. He invented relationship. I could talk about all the prophecies that Jesus fulfilled and there is many like there is a zillion prophecies that this man fully man fully God fulfilled in his 30 33 years on earth and he rose above all of that above the pain above the betrayal above us not even wanting him and died for us anyways so we could have the option of choosing God and like starting with a clean slate you know he went around forgiving sins and they were all upset about that because they're like only God can forgive sins and he's like what's easier for me to do to tell this person to get up and walk that disabled person or for me to say your sins are forgiven and he was full of compassion you guys like, I read it and I just weep sometimes because of how much love he was showing everybody. Who, if you're telling me that a like, man wrote the Bible, which one of us would put in there to forgive those who hurt you, to forgive your enemies? We got to stop the rebellion against him because that's pretty much what it is, rebellion. And he's always had his hand stretched out. No one has, no one will ever have an excuse to not choosing him. So check the facts. And God wants us to study. He doesn't want us to just accept everything easily. He wants us to study and show ourselves approved. Everybody has the same time, you know, same hours in the day. And this is very important. <laughs>